Acts. Four decades and seven years ago, nine new astronauts arrived in here in Houston answering the call for volunteers to fly to the moon. Uh, their predecessors, the Mercury 7, the original 7, the Magnificent 7, uh, had made a remarkable contribution. They had converted a program that essentially was a nose cone filled with a human into a real flying <laughs> spacecraft. And every spacecraft and spacecraft crew since then owes them a debt of gratitude. Uh, now these new kids uh, were not exactly novices. Uh, they were called the nearly normal nine. <laughs> and they arrived in September, the yellow sultry month. What, and what did they find? A very accomplished group of engineers and managers, a very new organization, uh, not yet solidified, but uh, advancing rapidly, making new progress significant progress. And what was it that qualified these nearly normal nine to join this lunar program? Well, they were, they were reasonably well educated for the job. And they were all test pilots. They were reasonably experienced for the job. And they had an intense passion for the job. And like all NASA folks, they would work their tails off. And none of them had the foggiest idea of what it would really take to do the job. Each were assigned some special responsibilities. Boosters, or PCS, or simulation and training, mission planning. And each started absorbing knowledge about their respective fields. And they knew with people that knew a good deal about certain disciplines, like the five gentlemen who just spoke to you, and others, Bill Tim, Paul Craig, Daniel Schiefer, Don Stolkin, Harney Aldrich, Ed Lineberry, many more, dozens of people with whom they built a strong level of trust. They learned of the essence and importance of, of working as a team, and they began to fill in the blanks in their knowledge. They learned how the program office and, and the mission planners and the flight controllers and so many others all were equally important and attuned to a common goal.
this, uh, I didn't write this this afternoon. <laughs> Probably started working on it 25 years ago, refining it piece by piece. I was going to give you a rhetorical repeat of the Glenn lecture, but I decided you can look that one up somewhere. Probably on my probably on my website, uh, but what I'm going to try and do is to just encapsulate, extract a few things of what I uh, presented to the uh, Human Spaceflight Review uh, Group, the Augustine Commission. Uh, John F. Kennedy implored us to ask not what our country could do for us but what we could do for our country. I believe we need to ask the same from our space program. So I say not what our country can do for the space program, but ask what can our space program do for the country. If we ask this question of our current space, cram, space program, I think the answer is clear. Our space program is asking what the nation can do for it, not what it can do for the nation. I come from an era in which our space program did great things to the nation. I truly believe that it can do great things for the country once again. Here are a few observations I've made. The U.S. has opened the moon for further exploration and development. The international community is prepared to pursue this path. The ISS is now ready to be used to advance our ability to operate and to cooperate in space. The space shuttle is a proven human flight, is a proven human flight vehicle. The international space community is rapidly maturing its ability to cooperate on large-scale endeavors. Appropriate challenging objectives can stimulate development of valuable national and global capabilities. Each spacefaring nation, including the U.S., has limited resources to devote to human space exploration and development. I do not believe that the current policy comes close to achieving these goals. I think that all of you uh, know that I've been writing and thinking about various things about human exploration for quite a while. I have a lot of ideas. Sometimes I realize that some of my ideas tend to get lost in the details. So let me see if I can distill these ideas into three fairly straightforward goals for U.S. human spaceflight. This is an artist's rendition that came from my latest children. This obviously is the red planet, and this is a rendition of focus, I think, the strategic gateway to Mars. The U.S. cannot afford to see human space transportation leadership. We must retain the capability to transport crew to the station. I believe we have no choice but to extend the shuttle until a state-of-the-art crew transportation system is available, and I think we should capitalize on the dynamism of the commercial market to develop a runway landing system which can truly become the basis for the U.S. highway to space. 